Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at a ridiculously cheap controller which we found as a special deal and posted across all of our social media. Is it going to be any good? Well, let's find out. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at a, uh, a game controller from EasySMX. This is the SL9111. And this is a wired controller for use with various devices, such as things like your PlayStation 3, your Switch controller, Android devices using OTG, Windows devices, which applies to me, and also other things like iPads, tablets, etc., etc., with a suitable adapter. So you're probably wondering why are we posting this video? Well, the reason was, originally, this controller, from what we can tell from EasySMX, was retailing for somewhere in the region of about 25 to 30 pounds, which for a wired controller seems a little bit on the steep side, if I'm completely honest, despite the fact it's got plenty of features. So when we found it actually advertised on Amazon.co.uk for $12.99, I had to jump on it. I've been using a slightly older Xbox 360 controller, which is definitely showing signs of age. We've gaffer taped it as much as possible, but still every now and then the USB breaks down uh, normally in the middle of a Rocket League match, which is extremely frustrating. I do also have some other controllers from EasySMX, as they have previously sent us controllers for review purposes. This one isn't sponsored, and this is actually when we found ourselves and actually purchased ourselves, so we can be completely open and honest, as we generally are, but possibly with a slight more vengeance and a little bit more anger, being the money has come out of my own pocket. So like I said, we found this as a fantastic deal, and for those of you that follow us on Discord or maybe on ShopSmart, which uh, links will be in the video description, you'd have probably seen this posted, and maybe by the time this video is aired, you've possibly already spent your money on it, and you probably know how good or indeed bad it possibly is but we'll go through all the things do the unboxing take a look at the controller do some actual real world gameplay see what it's actually like and see if i can actually use this as my main everyday controller we do have wireless ones like i said before but to be honest with you i do prefer the uh, simplicity of just plugging in an old-fashioned usb controller and just getting on with it don't have to worry about batteries being charged or looking for a charging cable all those kinds of things so for me this could be uh, an absolute godsend so looking at the packaging some of the specifications we've got here I'm not entirely sure who printed the box or where the specifications come from actually on the Amazon link, which if you want to click on now and open another tab, you can go through the links as well and see what the deal is. I've got to be honest with you, I'm completely uh, yeah, confused beyond all belief. I have had far too much coffee today, so potentially that may have something to do with it, but feel free to read along and see if you understand any of it, because I really don't. So it says, first of all, you've got the uh, rocker fine tuning. Also, you've got rocker sensitive rotation and also lightning change direction. And it's got a 2.4 gigahertz thing on there. This isn't wireless in any way, shape or form. And actually looking on the Amazon listing, it does talk about 2.4G and those kinds of things. So yeah, makes no sense at all. This, just to be completely clear, is a wired controller. For those of you that actually want to buy stuff directly from Easy SMX themselves, they do actually on the box have a QR code which you can scan. I'll put this on the screen so you can scan it yourselves if you want to, and you can claim a discount, 20% uh, off purchases. There's also inside the box comes with instructions and also a manual to show you how to use it, how to set it up, etc. And also another little QR code which you can scan to get, I think, $10 off. So potentially that may be of use to you if the deals have actually run out and there's no longer any stock available. Okay, so with all that guff out of the way, let's take a look at the controller and see what it's actually like. Now, my first actual impressions of this is it doesn't seem like a cheap controller. It's actually pretty well made, very sturdy indeed, virtually no creak to it whatsoever. And we've got a ton of buttons on here. The cable itself, um, yeah, not brilliant. It is a rather smooth kind of traditional cable, no braiding as such. And we've only got a regular USB connection, no gold plating on this. But certainly seems long enough. We're looking about two meters long for the cable. So yeah, absolutely fine. We do have an absolute plethora of buttons on here. So looking at the front, we have got the traditional analog sticks, both left and right. D-pad button, you've also got a back, a turbo, a start and a mode button. And in the middle, you've obviously got your home button, which, which is useful for things like the uh, Xbox game recorder, that kind of thing. And obviously you've got your buttons there. In this particular mode, now that it isn't illuminated, you can't really tell which button is which. It does say on there, A, B, X, Y. You can kind of just about make out. I'd have liked to have seen these actually been in a regular color, but don't worry because when we plug it in, everything lights up and looks absolutely wonderful. On the top of the controller, or yeah, I guess you'd call it the top of the controller. So we've got our additional buttons. So you've got your L1, L2, and also RT and LT. So nice trigger buttons. And you'll be glad to know that the trigger buttons are analog, so they're not digital. So if you have a small movement, it becomes a small movement of your game 
engine speed whatever it may be i do prefer this you do find that some controllers actually are digital so it's literally a click on click off which is absolutely useless for the majority of games in my opinion also looking a little bit further down we've also got four customizable buttons so there is an m1 m2 m3 m4 which are these kind of little rocker ones here which can be custom configured so all you need to do is press and hold the button that you want to configure so say for instance m3 so press and hold that one press the back button then the LED will change color on the ring here and then you can associate a different button with it should you wish to. I don't think many people will find much use in that and they don't actually appear in Windows as additional buttons. So they are kind of um, yeah, like a combo button or maybe a macro button. Also, there's another two buttons of note which are actually pretty handy. So one of which is a lighting button. So we've got that on the left hand side. You can press that one to change the levels of lighting for the overall controller for the X, Y, a B buttons and also the ring around the analog controller. There's five gradients, one of which is off, so there's 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. So yeah, that's pretty good. If you don't like brighter lights on your control pad, then you can adjust those if you want to. Another nice feature is you can adjust the actual sensitivity of the rumble feedback in the motor. So there's two motors, one on each side to give you that force feedback feel. And if you press the button, then you can see which mode you're in. It will vibrate accordingly to whichever one you're set. If you press it and keep on pressing it, you can cycle through the various options. So four levels, one, two, three, and four, four being the strongest, which actually, to me, feels pretty decent. In terms of actual texture and actual feel quality, etc., you've got some nice textured sides on here to grip onto, and actually feels pretty decent. The satin matte black finish on the top is actually really nice, and even though I've got relatively sweaty hands at the moment because I'm drinking way, way too much coffee, uh, they don't seem to be leaving very many prints at all, so that's always a good thing. So overall, seems like a really decent package, and at the moment, there's two versions of this available. Now, we did find originally the black one, which is what we've got here, which is $12.99. But for those of you who want to save a little bit more money, there is also an exactly the same version of this, which comes in grey, which we've just literally posted on our Discord for $7.99, which I think is incredible, and I had to buy one of those as well, so that'll be coming up very shortly. You may well see that in a live stream or possibly in a follow-up video. Stay subscribed to find out more. So you're probably thinking to yourselves by now, okay, Mike, it sounds great, it sounds very cheap, but is it actually any good for gaming? Well, let's find out right away. So this is me playing Rocket League, as you can probably uh, work out already. And I've got to be honest with you, the controller does seem to be pretty decent. The uh, control is really nice, really smooth. All of the analog sticks behave exactly as you'd expect. No real dead zone as such. Pretty much as soon as you start moving the controller, it actually starts to turn, which is always a good thing. And those analog triggers are absolutely fantastic. No issues whatsoever. It did take me a little while to get used to them. They weren't quite as long and protruding as they are on the Xbox 360 controller, which I'm used to using. But after a very short while, it did become second nature and felt actually very tactile. Did the job exceptionally well. And I'll be honest with you, I don't actually miss the controller that much, although I did miss that open goal there pretty much, so yeah. Anyway, that is uh, Rocket League, worked absolutely flawlessly, as you'd expect, very responsive, yeah, no issues whatsoever. Okay, so this is Far Cry New Dawn, a little bit of a, a different one to be uh, trying to use with this type of controller. And first of all, yeah, the uh, the down click to run is a little bit a little bit vague. Not too bad though, but it does require quite a lot of force. So for those of you that are doing that sort of game, you might find it a little bit off. The trigger, it's very good. They're actually the dead zone is kind of it says on there there isn't one. If you move it slow enough, it will very vaguely pick it up. So sudden movements are fine, as you can see there, left to right, and the up, down, left, right. So if I do it very, very gently, yeah, there is a little bit of a dead zone, but not so much as it, uh, it interferes with the game. But the actual uh, click to run yeah, isn't great. So let's, uh, let's see if we can actually find someone. Yeah, it's actually not a bad joystick. The, um, the click, as you can probably hear, is a little bit on the tough side. Not as nice as the original Xbox 360 controller in that respect. But yeah, seems to be okay. And the uh, there doesn't seem to be any problems with any random movements, so... 
yeah, the control is seems to be pretty good. Might be, if anything, that's a little on the slow side. Actually moving around, so I might need to adjust that actually in-game. And the uh, trigger seems to be good. Yeah, I think that... Uh, I think that pretty much does it all. The uh, buttons on the top are a little bit weird to get used to because they're not quite where you'd expect to see them. But other than that, yep, yeah, seems A-OK. -okay. OK, so there we go. We've done some gameplay. And actually, yep, yeah, not too bad at all for the money. You cannot go wrong. You really can. It does feel very precise, very accurate. And the one thing which kind of gets me a little bit, I'll be honest with you, is the buttons here for the back and forward or start and back, that kind of thing. Because you've got the two extra buttons underneath, it's not quite as simple as it would be in some games to just find those normal buttons which should be there but again not the end of the world and as you can see there we've got the uh, the buttons are all lit up now so if we press the led button you can cycle through the different lightings to choose which one you prefer but yeah overall really good rocket league absolutely fine the analog triggers on the bottom work exactly as intended so it's not just on or off it is actually incremental so that's really nice to see but overall yeah nice uh, nice controller feels good in the hand works very well no complaints. So there will be links for this in the video description. Hopefully it's still going to be at a similar price. If it isn't, if you click on it and it's a different price, do let us know and we'll try and update it or find other links which will be suitable. I would say at the original price of about £20, £25, there possibly is others on the market that you may prefer. Again, this has got a lot of nice features, it is compatible with a lot of devices, but for some you might find the, uh, the start and the back buttons being a little bit on the odd side. But otherwise, other than that, absolutely fine and I think I'm on fire looking at the game behind me and yeah the vibration is uh, pretty pretty good in actual fact that was only on level two so that's on level four yeah it's uh, it is a pretty powerful vibration motor in there so yeah, lots of flexibility and at this price you certainly can't go wrong so let me know what you think about this one in the comments below but in the meantime i've been mike this is mike's unboxing reviews and how to and hopefully we'll catch you yes you in the very next video thanks for watching